time to put the rockers back in the head. Now when I took the rockers out, I wrote down the numbers on them. Okay, I finally got the rockers back in. And I have a couple of little tips. First of all, before you ever take it out, before you ever take the rockers out, loosen the adjusters because you're not going to loosen them once you have them out. Second, go ahead and take the intake adjuster off completely because you need the clearance on the intake side. Third, when you put them back, put the exhaust rocker back in first, but don't slide the shaft in because you need to pull the exhaust rocker as far out into its adjustment hole as possible to leave clearance to be able to put the intake rocker in even with its adjuster out. So that's the easy way to do it which I learned the hard way. But I've got them back in now. Oh, the cam doesn't go back in until the head is on the engine. That I know. Okay, this plate covers the uh, rocker shafts and the camshaft. Make sure that it, that area is clean. At least, you know, no loose debris. Because uh, that's an important part of the uh, top end lubrication system. In the last video, I briefly touched on the top end oiling system and promised to cover it in greater detail in this video. So, here's the way it works. I pointed out the uh, oil pressure hole in the crankcase. And in the earlier pushrod engines, a uh, steel line attached to that point and went to the head to all the rockers. But in this overhead valve engine, it, uh, it comes down this head stud, and that's the hole for it. See, this is the bottom of the head, because there's the exhaust port. So, it comes down through here, and there is a hole inside there. And uh, the stud is sealed here so it doesn't allow the, the oil pressure to come out but uh, the rocker shafts are hollow so there's a hole there to feed the oil into the, this rocker shaft and there's a hole in the, uh, the rocker shaft here to feed this rocker then it comes out and uh, this cover has two channels in it it goes down here and there's a pocket and then it goes back up here now what it does when it goes up here is it goes into this rocker shaft which also has a hole in it and it's a dead end here so it pressure lubes this rocker but it also goes I know I mentioned that there's a pocket in here okay you can actually see it in there maybe let me see get a flashlight You might be able to see that. Anyway, here's the camshaft, and it's hollow as well. And so the oil pressure goes into there, fills up that cavity, and it also, you can see a, a spiral cut in this uh, bearing surface on the cam. And so the oil pressure goes into that and the cam is turning in this direction so it basically screws the oil through that bearing 
and then dumps it into the rocker box. And uh, that's where the oil all eventually ends up is in the rocker box. And it also goes into the hollow uh, cavity in the center of the cam. And you can see there's a hole right there and there, one on each lobe. And then there's another one in this bearing. And this one has a groove cut into it as well, but it's, see it's turning this way, but the groove is uh, is threaded in the, the opposite direction, so it also returns that oil to the rocker box. So all of that oil ends up in the rocker box. And goes to the floor of it and then drops down because, you know, it's oriented like this. So it drops down and there's a cavity in the bottom and you can actually see on the outside of it there's this block right here is hollow and of course it's uh, it's blocked off on the end here but there's an opening inside the uh, the cam gear cavity and uh, so it all ends up there and then it runs back down through the the cam chain cavity and uh, goes back into the crankcase so that's how that works <laughs>